The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 2nd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the new normal time, which would be 11 o'clock, we are recording today's show a bit earlier. But we're going to certainly make it uh, relative if you are listening in at the normal time frame out there. Now, if you are listening between 8 and 9, I would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call, 877-927-6648. And if you can't call in, but you'd still like a question answered, then send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Please send it early. And in that subject heading, it would be so helpful if you could put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got U.S. equity futures uh, kind of mixed out here. We've got Dow futures up 14, NASDAQ futures down 10, S&P futures up 2, Russell futures up 3. If you take a look at what took place over in Asia last night, also a mixed bag. You had the Shanghai finish up just slightly, basically flat. The Nikkei and the Hang Seng were off 10 and 145 points, basically flat, and then down 7 tenths. Over in uh, Australia, the uh, Australian 200 was down about a quarter of a percent. In Europe this morning, take a look at the DAX and the FTSE. DAX in Germany up 186 points, 1.5%, about 9 tenths or 8 tenths of a percent for the FTSE. That's up 59 points. Gold's up 7 bucks. Silver's up 13 cents. Platinum's up 11 bucks. Palladium's up $19. If you take a look at Light Sweet Crude, it's up a buck 59. Trade out at 88.20. Copper's uh, down just a tad. Natural gas is up 25 cents. Trade out at about 9 bucks. Even Stephen, a 30 year treasury is flat. And the U.S. dollar index trading down around 109.35. I do have a 10-minute delay on that, so I could be off just by a tad. So what does all that mean? Great question. So what all that means is let's go take a look at our other sets of charts out here. So let's do this. Let's go take a look at internationally what went on, see if there's any kind of clues as to what might take place today. So we'll begin with uh, take a look at the Shanghai, the upper left-hand corner. So what we'll see here as we expand this chart out, we'll see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It has not completed. Price is below its red oscillator and change line. It's below its TD9 count breakout level. You're in bar number three. Odds favor that price is going to at least go target the recent lows from August support. That's that hammer low. That's down around 3306. If price closes below that, then price should get back to that 3272 area. That could then uh, set up the completion of an A to B equal CD to the downside. That would create a Gartley buy pattern. So the Shanghai should continue to head lower. If we take a look at what happened in the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng also has an A to B equals CD to the downside. It's got quite a ways to get down to that. In fact, we we'll take it back to its, um, well, let me just do this here. Make sure. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Meant to do maybe this. There we go. So uh, that would take us back into our uh, March of uh, 2022 lows out here. Prices below its red oscillator and change line, bar number three as well. So price should head lower. Now, there is some support right here at the uh, low of August 24th out at uh, 19,189. But this is signaling to us both the uh, Shanghai and the Hang Seng should continue lower. Now, the Nikkei 225 completed a TD9 count bottom pattern today. I did that because today was the bar following, whoops, sorry about that, following bar number nine. There's also an A to B equals CD pattern here, which was negated, quite frankly, uh, 
not last night, but the night before when price closed below support out here. So what do you do? Look, what price should do here with the TD9 count bottom, much like we have inside the U.S. markets, is price should bounce up to its oscillator and change on around 28402. But because it's got that A to B equals CD, you'd like to see a bullish reversal candle to simply confirm that bottom. Very similar to what we got in many of the uh, indices, some of the equity future contracts yesterday. If we take a look at the DAX, the DAX have been trading in a very large consolidation here for quite some time. Let's open up this uh, chart. Let's pull this back just a uh, tad out there. So you can see quite a large consolidation. Now, what took place yesterday is price went ahead and negated this little TD9 count bottom, little TD9 count bottom, the one that formed on August 29th. This suggests, even though we're getting a little bit of rally, suggests that price likely will go target the bottom of that consolidation around the 12, 400 ish range out there. But if the uh, U.S. markets continue to rally out here, um, and we're closed on Monday, odds favor that what the DAX is actually trying to do before it makes that run lower is try to get up to that oscillator and change line of the 13.049 area. It's not a guarantee, but um, the DAX and the uh, NASDAQ typically move in the same directional pattern out there. And we go take a look at the NASDAQ, we're going to see that that has nice confirmed bottoms. So I am making the assumption that we're going to at least rally today and uh, perhaps into the early part of next week. If we take a look at the FTSE, let's just expand this chart out. What we'll see here is you're going to complete a TD, you're going to confirm a TD9 count pattern today. It will complete on Monday. What I mean by that is you're going to get bar number nine today. The low so far is on bar number eight. That qualifies as a valid TD9 count as long as bar number nine closes below the close of bar number five. If that doesn't happen today, um, we're going to have one of the most gigantic, ginormous rallies that we've ever seen. So we're not calling for that, but we are calling for a TD9 count bottom that will complete on Monday, and that should then take price up to its house center and change on around 73.93. So that's what's going on over in Europe and Asia. With regard to the U.S. dollar index, yesterday the U.S. dollar index negated its uh, roads momentum indicator top out here, and. Uh, uh, by closing above, uh, by, by closing up prior resistance. So what we have inside the U.S. dollar index is no top in place right now. And price is trading above the top of its daily profile, 109.20. As long as price remains above that, odds favor a further rally inside of the U.S. dollar. Now, the euro and the yen, you know, are two of the components, two of the other uh, five components that make up the U.S. dollar index. In the case of the euro out here, let's just expand this out. The euro has a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. It's actually got two of them, but we're looking at this one right here uh, that uh, completed and formed on August 25th out there. Now, what we have here is, and what price should be doing, is price should be targeting 102, but what we really have right now, it appears, is just a consolidation pattern inside of the uh, euro. So price, as long as price remains above the top of its, or above its red oscillator change line, perhaps what price is going to do, do is go target the top of this consolidation you know, at about 1.008, somewhere around there. How about that, the euro? 99 cents right now on the U.S. dollar. I mean, if ever there was a time to uh, go travel to Europe, well, really, that time will probably be next year when the euro gets down to about 84 cents, 82 cents, or something along that line out there. But if we take a look at the uh, the uh, Japanese yen, I don't have the pound out here. The pound is uh, looks like it wants to also weaken and move lower. And the uh, Japanese yen is moving higher, which means it's weakening against the U.S. dollar. There is an A to B equal CD pattern out here, but uh, not until a bearish reversal candle forms will this identify a top. So that's what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index. Looks like it wants to continue to run higher. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, uh, folks. Uh, it is 8, 8 18 in the morning. In case you're listening at 11 18, we are recording today's show earlier. You've got uh, U.S. equity futures a bit mixed out here. Dow's off 10, NASDAQ 100 off 23. The uh, uh, S&P's down uh, one point. The Russell is up uh, one. So let's continue on with our analysis of what the markets are doing. We took a look at international markets, what's going on inside the currency pairs out there. Let's take a look at our nine panel market update chart. We take a look at the ES Mini in the upper left-hand corner. Now, what you're going to see out here in the ES Mini, yesterday was a nice bullish hammer candle. So what yesterday did, and you'll see when we take a look at our white background charts, it confirmed really two patterns, two bottom patterns out there. The first one was the completion of an A to B equals CD. Now, the way that an A to B equals CD pattern completes, it will generate either a bullish or a bearish reversal candle. Bearish reversal candle on an A to B equals CD to the upside. Bullish reversal candle on an A to B equals CD to the downside. Well, we got that confirmation yesterday with that bullish hammer candle candle. We also have a TD9 count bottom. You can't see it here. You'll see it when we switch over to the white background charts. What is also forming now this morning, this will not be confirmed until Sunday evening, is a new market profile. I'm using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool that helps us identify uh, new profiles as they are attempting to form. And what we do know is even though they're attempting to form, they will not be complete and uh, confirmed until Sunday. What we do know is where bulls and bears are taking their position right now. Now, this is a bullish structure daily profile. The support zone is between 39.34 and 39.66. Right now we're trading right at about that uh, 39.66 level, 39.67, uh, 39.68 out there. If price closes above the center of a bullish structured profile, odds favor that uh, price will be able to make its way up to the top of that profile. And that is currently at 40.60. So right now, the counter trend move, the counter trend rally that is in place out here, or should be, should began yesterday, should continue today, should target the 4060 level. Now that'll especially be true if that spot volatilix continues to fall. It's still above its 50 day exponential moving average. The uh, spot volatilix has a TD9 count top in it. That should then take price back to the 50 day exponential moving average. The 50 day is currently printing at 2405. If the spot politics continues to move lower, the S&P, the ES mini should continue to move higher. The NQ has both a TD9 count bottom. Now, that was confirmed on uh, Wednesday. 
And uh, it has a, a, now, yesterday was a nice bullish hammer candle, and that has completed a buy the D point pattern. It, too, is attempting to form a new profile. So we know where buyers and sellers are setting up, at least setting up right now for the day. And the seller or the buyers are at the 12,137 level. The sellers are at 12,618. So the NQ should rally up to that 12,618 level. Back to the U.S. dollar index, we already covered that, so no reason for us to take a look at that. The uh, gold contract basically completed a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD move yesterday. Now, price right now, yesterday closed below the bottom of its weekly profile. Today, it's trying to get back inside that. To get back inside that, it needs a close above 17, 16, 60 out there. We're trading at 17, 16, 10. Um, so, and if we get a bullish reversal candle, uh, today, you could get a bullish engulfing candle. You could get a piercing candle out here. That will then confirm a buy the D point pattern. Now, we don't have new profiles, but what we can say is price would likely go target the first level of resistance, which would be 1757.50. Silver, although it doesn't show here, it's in a larger A to B equal CD to the downside. That pattern had already confirmed and completed. That was negated a couple days ago with the close. But if we did get a bullish reversal candle today, then silver would generate a buy the D point pattern with its price target to the upside being the 1863 to 1888 level. Light Sweet Crude has found support at both the bottom of its daily and bottom of its weekly profiles. Those are 8651 and 8901 respectively. And price has held a rising trend line. What we can see with regard to Light Sweet Crude is it's trading between trend line support and trend line resistance. Natural gas completed a TD9 count top. It did that last week. A price is just consolidating sideways, really between the top and center of its uh, slightly bearish structured profile out there. So just consolidating sideways here, not a whole lot of damage. And as we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, uh, it uh, negated a bottoming pattern. Yesterday was a, I believe it was a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom that was out there. So it needs a, and there's an A to B equal CD to the downside. A bullish reversal candle would confirm a buy the D point pattern. That's not anything that we're looking at as we speak right now. So that's an overview of the of the general markets and, and other instruments that each of you like to trade and, and where their current position or status is. Now let's go take a look at the uh, daily equity future contracts out here. So let's do this. We're going to move over to a different set of screens. And in the upper left-hand corner, you'll now see that the ES Mini, in addition to the TD9 count by the D-point pattern, uh, it did that at its breakout level which is 38, 38, 75. If, if ever there was a sign of a bottom, at least a couple day rally out here, you got it yesterday. You absolutely got it yesterday. Now, remember, there's a new profile that the ES Mini is attempting to form. And that resistance level, the top of that profile that is, is at the uh, 38, uh, I'm sorry, it's at the uh, 4060 level. So 4060 is a price target. The oscillator and change line is also another price target of 40.93. So we'll know more when we're back together on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. We'll know whether these profiles have actually formed. Maybe new profiles will form out there. We know that new profiles are attempting to form. And at this stage here, we should see a further rally. If you take a look at the NQ, the over on the right-hand side, you'll see that it did a similar thing to the ES Mini. It formed its bottom patterns at its breakout level, 12, 191, Folks, when you come back to a breakout level, even without a bottoming signal, that in itself can be a buy point. That's where the buy the dipsters are always at. They're looking for price either to come back to the bottom of a profile where there's buyers and support or the breakout area. And that's at the 12, 191, area. So the NQ, remember the top of that new profile is up at the 12, 618 area. The 12, 781 is its oscillator and change line. Those are the price targets. The Dow does not have a TD9 count breakout level. So what it did was it completed that A to B equals CD to the downside. It completed a TD9 count pattern. And this suggests there is no new profile for the Dow. Not, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Stevie. I think that there was. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second here. I want to make sure I give you accurate information. Yeah, there is a new profile that is attempting to form. Now, this one's fairly narrow. The top of that profile is at the 31,887 area out here. And what the Dow really should do is go target that 32. 528. So write down on your pad of paper 31887. 
That could be where a counter trend move would end. If price can close above that, then the signal is that what price really wants to do is go target those oscillator and change lines. Now, the Russell 2000, the equity future contract, does not have a bottoming signal. Price did come back to its breakout level. Remember, I just said coming back to a breakout level can be a buy the dip point out there. So it would not be unusual for that to get Now, the Russell 2000, if it formed a bullish reversal candle today, would confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. The Russell 2000 cash index, I don't have that shown here, did form a bullish hammer candle yesterday, but it also formed a gap to the downside. And that means we have both a bullish and a bearish reversal signal out there. But the other three markets, the ES, the NQ, and the YM, have given us confirmation you should expect and anticipate a further rally. And how will you know if that really is going to unfold? Well, that's pretty simple out here. As we go to a break, we'll take a look at those 30-minute time frame charts. It's both the ES and the NQ that have TD9 count tops. You close above 39.74.25 in the ES, you close above... 12, 320, 50 in the NQ, and you're headed north. I'm not headed north today. I'm actually headed west. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. It is the first Friday in September. You know what that means. That means it's Jobs Friday, and those numbers are going to come out in about eight seconds out there. So what I've got up here is the uh, I've just got our, our charts here to take a look at what the market action is. Well, we can already see it. At least the first reaction uh, was for equity futures to uh, bounce higher. They did that. 
Then they've just given up those gains, just a, a tad out here. Now they're back to uh, gains out here. Uh, gold uh, jumped up uh, to 10 bucks right now. So we've got a lot of movers and shakers out here. So let's do this. We'll come back to the movers and shakers. What you and I already know is based upon yesterday's information is that uh, we should see a rally unfold uh, today. So let's take a couple of questions that have come in. Then we'll come back to uh, these charts here. We'll take a look. Unless there's other questions, we'll take a look at uh, gold and so forth and just how the markets have moved. But uh, we've already given you the layout, the roadmap uh, for today out there. Uh, so let's go take a look at our first question. We only have two that are in. I'd love to hear from you as well, folks. So give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email. Send that quickly, steve at tfnn.com. And please put radio show question inside that subject. Heading. So the first question coming in from Alton. Alton says, good morning, Steve. I'm looking to get into CTRA. Um, CTRA is... Cotera Energy Inc. The email goes on to say, I love the fundamentals of this company. Please help me with the technicals. At what level would you suggest for entry point considering its daily and weekly OUL and TAS support? Da, 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 da. Thank you. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Thank you, uh, Alton, and everybody out there. Please have a fun, safe, enjoyable. Hard to believe it's the so-called end of summer. Of course, when you live in Florida, it's never the end of summer. That is a beautiful thing out there. At least that's what Stevie believes. And uh, so I want everybody to have a, a great Labor Day uh, weekend as well. Always nice to get a uh, extra day off, uh, so to speak. So let's go take a look at uh, Coterra Energy, see if we can help Alton out. And so we'll switch over to my uh, three white background uh, screens out here. We can take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly. So here's what we know right now about uh, CTRA. This completed a TD9 count top on August the 23rd. Not until that high gets taken out, that high is at 3190, will we get a signal that price wants to move higher? If that gets taken out, that signal would be that price wants to move up to 3560. So now what is price doing? Well, price is below or closed below yesterday. It's also during change line. So the bottom of the profile, again, the bottom of the profile is one area where buyers are lined up. So Alton, that level's at 2946. Would I use 2946 right to the tick? No. So one entry area would be 29.46. A second entry area would be price pulling all the way back to its breakout level of 27.24. Um, so those would be the two entry points. If we look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame shows that this could form bar number eight this week. Now, in order, yeah, that's it's going to form bar. Well, it should form bar number eight this week. Now, on a weekly basis, now a TD9 count top. So on a weekly basis, this formed a TD9 count top all the way up here on June the third. That was the bar following bar number nine. And then what did price do? It pulled all the way back to its breakout level, which held 26.18. Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. The wicks, the, ex the wicks, the upper lower shadows out there, whatever you want to refer to those as, those are nothing more than the screaming memes that took place during that time frame's candle session out there. They're helpful, but uh, the body of the candle is truly the essence of price. Price held that breakout level of 26.18, and now it's bounced higher. Now, this may go on to form a TD9 count top. We don't know if it will or it won't. Just this week is bar number eight. Next week, price would have to close above the uh, close of bar number five to form that pattern. And that closed at 28.66. But knowing that's a weekly TD9 count that may form out here. By the way, on a monthly basis, this formed a TD9 count top as well. But what price did was it pulled back and tested and rejected support, both the uh, top of its profile as well as its green offset and change line. So its signal is neutral. The signal here on the weekly basis is not neutral, at least not just yet, because price is below that green offset and change line. So what I would be more apt to do right now Alton is um, is to look for that 2724 area, and the reason why I suggest that is if I put over a 30 minute time frame chart, just looking to see if there's any kind of signal here, and there really isn't other than just some sideways price action. So I don't have a good signal on a 30 minute time frame chart, but I'm going to go with right now. Look, your entry areas, which is what you asked for. So I, I'm giving you those. They're 29.46 and 27.24. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for your email request, and have a happy Labor Day as well. The next request comes in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look. It says, uh, happy early bird, Steve-O. Absolutely. This is my favorite time of the day. I was up at about 4.30 this morning. Is is really being up early when it's peace and quiet and there's no distractions and nothing going on. Uh, it's, it's even a great time to be on the road. So uh, I am an early birder and have uh, eaten a lot of uh, worms out there. 
Uh, that means really I've had a little bit of tequila in my lifetime. Happy, fabulous, fantastic Friday is what Hector goes on. He says, as Exxon Mobil, my opinion is building cause to take a run at the all-time high. Last three daylight days, light volume pullback, uh, made the hair on his neck stand up. Thoughts, please? So let's go take a look at Exxon Mobil. And what Exxon Mobil is uh, doing right now, so the, this blue line on the daily time frame would be the uh, C to D leg out here, which it doesn't appear to have really completed. It's just simply too far away, which is about 103, and the high was around 101. So I don't really think we've got it completed A to B equals C to D or sell the D point pattern out here. What we do have, though, is uh, price is below the bottom of its daily profile and below its oscillator and change line. So building cause, perhaps it is, but right now it could be building cause to move lower out there. As long as price remains below 96.62, that would be its message. If price were to close above 96, 96.62, and let me see what it's trading at in the uh, pre-marker right now. Exxon Mobil is trading at 95.75, so not good enough. If price closed above 96.62, then I'm on board with you that at least price should try to make a run higher with resistance or sellers being at 98.11 and 99.91. So perhaps price is going to pull back further, pull back further to where? Well, its price target could be 85.21, but we're not going to go there, Hector, because the next downside price support level comes from the weekly time frame, which is 89.80. You got a nice TD9 count top. If you would like that, you know, on the uh, monthly time frame. So that price, that says price really needs to take out its uh, all time high out there in order to really get moving to the upside. But price is above the top of its weekly profile, above its green oscillator and change line. So its signal is really neutral. The weekly time frame has that Rhodes Mint indicator top that confirmed with that bearish shooting star candle out there that did take price back to support the bottom of its profile, 81.92. You can see that's where buyers were located. That's why we gave Alton, you know, the uh, the, t the two different levels of support out there, potential levels of support. Um, if we take a look at uh, at Exxon Mobil, it's trading back below the bottom of its profile, 95.06 is the level that price needs to close above. But really, in the trade at 95.75 in the pre-market, price needs to take out and close back above 96.40, the green oscillator and change line. If it does that, then, Hector, price should go target the highs from uh, June the 10th out there. That's up towards the 105 area. So we got a little bit of, uh, so right now, it depends on today's close, but right now, if uh, you know if this were today's close here, this is still suggesting lower price. And I'd go with the 89.80 as my next downside target. Now, on a 30-minute time frame chart out here, so intraday, what do we have? Well, you've got a nice road momentum indicator bottom that had formed out here. We know price is trading at 95.78. 95.78 is going to get us up towards our resistance zone, which is 96.41 to 96.79. So price close above 96.79. This is coming from the 30-minute time frame chart. What this is suggesting to you, Hector and Patty, is that price wants to continue to move higher. Uh, so that's our thoughts on Exxon Mobil. You're also, it looks like, asking about IWM. IWMF allowed, please review as you load it up as it touched the A to B equals CD down buy point for the deep one yesterday by one pen. So we're going to take a look at the IWM for Hector and Patty. Folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFNet.com or 877-927-6648. Of course, in our Tigers Den, anything will do. Look we'll right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the charts here for the IWM up on our screen. You can see the A to B point that I drew in there. That's that first blue line. And then I just simply copied and pasted, uh, copy, paste, and assemble. That is, um, you know, I am a CPA by uh, trade out there. Of course, that was a long time ago when I got that uh, certificate. Um, but what we have here is the A to B equals CD. It was more than a one-to-one -one, um, out there. And, and we did form, or it did form, a bullish hammer candle yesterday. However, Hector, what it also did was it formed a gap to the downside. So as I mentioned in the early part of the show, we have both a bullish and a bearish reversal candle. Now, what I like to do when you have gaps is I like to go ahead and, and uh, take that gap, which is I uh, is by this rectangle here that I, I've used, and then simply add that to the candle, add that to the current day's candle and say, okay, if that, if we filled in the, uh, in the gap there, does that still leave us with a bullish hammer candle? And the answer is it would not. Because the, the, the body of the candle, first the wick of the candle needs to be twice, at least twice the size of the body of the candle out there. And I can just tell by visually looking at this that this would not qualify. That doesn't mean you're not going to bounce out here. Um, because clearly we are. We take a look at the markets out there. And so I just think the IWM in sympathy with regard to what else is going on is going to bounce. Now with regard to the IWM, you want to see this get back above its a gap. And that's at the one, the low is... Uh, 183, 183.19. In the pre-market, the IWM is trading at uh, 182.59. So you'd really like to see it at least get above that gap out there, and that should continue to uh, move higher. But the IWM and the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract did not give us the type of signals that we got from the ES, the NQ, uh, and the uh, Dow uh, contract out there. So um, uh, just be careful. And, and Hector and Patty, at this stage here, I'm not really considering this to be, oh, how can I show you that chart? How can I show you? Oh, I can I can do it. I've got that chart here. Uh, so, you, we, look, we all have to be careful. We got a nice bottom yesterday. We're going the rallies. It, it should, should, should hold today. If it doesn't hold, there's really trouble in River City. So it should hold today. And... Um, but the question is, how long is it going to last? So I'll put this chart. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. I'll put this chart up here. At a minimum, what we should get is a at least a two-day rally. Yesterday was day number one. We closed above the uh, – I'm looking at the NDX 100, by the way. We closed above the, uh, the, uh, uh, the bottom of the prior day. So we got a little bit of a higher close. My, my, my system won't, won't just show bar number one out there. Uh, but 
So today, yesterday was bar number one. Today will be bar number two. If you take a look at coming off of the bottom here, we've had one, two, three, two, three, four, five. We've had five two-bar rallies. We've had a couple of three-bar rallies, and we've had one five-bar rally. So the rally that is underway should last anywhere between two to five days. Now, two days says that today would be the high out there. So I just throw that out. If you are a conservative uh, trader out there, I mean, I, I would really need to see today's close. And I am not going to be in front of my screen when uh, when today's close uh, takes place. In fact, uh, shortly after the show here, I'll uh, get on the road and, and I won't have my laptop or anything uh, with me. So I, I won't I won't know. But I just want to certainly share that with you. Typical counter trend moves in a bear market are going to be two to three bars. But at this stage here, I can see two to five bars based upon the sequences that we've seen so far out there. And that says that we could see a top that forms really between the end of day today and next uh, Thursday, I believe, is when uh, the uh, fifth day could uh, come into play out there. So I just share that with you and, and just suggest uh, I don't want anybody to interpret excitement. Or any, and, and look, it could be a uh, significant bottom. I just don't think so. Uh, but Stevie says he doesn't think so. What would suggest that it could be more of a significant bottom? Now, that's a great question. So how would we answer that? The way that I'd answer that is I'd look into the weekly time frame charts. So we're going to go look at the weekly time frame charts. We're going to just change our screens out here. Oh, now this is going to be interesting to see if I can grab the right screen. I think it's this one right here. So you should be looking at the weekly. Yeah, you are. So if you take a, a look at the uh, weekly uh, oscillator and change line, folks, that's the red squiggly line on our screen out here. If price closes below those levels, for the ES, it's 40.20. For the NQ, for the NQ, it's 12.370. For the Dow, it's 32.125, and the Russell is above it. If price can close above those oscillator and change lines, that's going to suggest more rally is, more counter trend move is likely. If price closes below those levels, it just, it's, when you're below a red oscillator and change line, what it's telling us is that we have a falling price oscillator and the falling price oscillator is below zero. Those are simply bearish directional signals for us. So when you take a look at the two-day rally, now look on Tuesday when we come back, it could just be a pullback and then the rally resumes. But I just simply want to make sure that I'm being clear with regard to the technical signals that uh, that we see inside the marketplace as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out, Hector and uh, Patty. Have a uh, happy uh, holiday as well, and we'll look forward to uh, getting back with you hopefully on uh, Tuesday. So no other requests that we've got in the queue right now. So now let's go take a look at how the market has responded to the uh, jobs data. So right now, as we speak, and this is uh, 8.48 in the morning, you've got Dow equity futures up 91, NASDAQ up 30, S&P futures up 12, E-mini Russell is up 8, gold's up 7, silver's up 15 cents, uh, platinum's up uh, 10 bucks out there, lights recruit is up uh, 250. So let's start taking a look at some of these instruments out here. Let's go take a look at uh, gold and silver. And let's do this. Let me make sure which chart I'm okay. Let's do this. Let's take a look at our multi-panel set of charts out here for gold. That would be this. We've got daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So if you take a look at the weekly time frame for gold, that is the upper right-hand chart. What you're going to see is gold has been in a sideways consolidation. So that sideways consolidation um, was tagged this week. The last time it was tagged was out here in the trading week of uh, July the uh, July the 18th, the week that began July 18th. And so the question is, will this hold? If it does hold, and you can see you got the A to B equals CD to the downside, the small one inside of a gold, close enough for my work. It got down yesterday to 1713. 1685 is the exact one to one A to B equals CD. Well, that's for the that's for Stevie's uh, that's for Stevie's synthetic contract. The actual number of the one to one is 1694.40, and the actual low yesterday was 1699. So um, so a bullish reversal candle would absolutely uh, generate a buy the D point pattern. That would suggest to move up to the 1775 level. But I want to go back here. So so I've got uh, we, were, we were just looking. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to look at the chart, the chart. Um, 
Here, the symbols that I'm using are a synthetic symbol that allows me to stitch together um, multiple futures contracts, get TAS market uh, profiles out there, uh, and not use the continuous contract. This works out better for us. So, uh, but the numbers will be different, uh, as you can see out there, which is why I flip back to the actual December contract. But here, you can see the consolidation. So if we get a bullish reversal candle today, you should expect to anticipate a further rally inside of a gold. And again, that first price target to the upside would be the 1765 area. So that's what's going on there. If we take a look at the silver, let's do the same thing. And when I say the same thing, let's look at this multi time frame charts out here. Now, silver is attempting. No, this is just, I think this popped up on our screen. Silver is attempting to form a new daily profile with support around 1759 and resistance at 1938 out there. Wow, that's quite a wide profile. Hmm, something to think about. You can see on a uh, quarterly basis, price is back into its bullish structured support level between 1639 and 1821. When we get back to this break, we're going to look at ENVX for Bob in Spokane. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Back up, folks. 8.54 in the morning. Dow futures up about 150. S&P up 22. NASDAQ up 58. And the Russell's up uh, 12 points right now. We're taking a look at uh, ENVX. Uh, this is for uh, Bob in uh, Spokane. Uh, ENVX is uh, NOVIX Corp out here, which yesterday pulled back and tested the bottom of its daily profile. But what I've got out here right now is a 30-minute time frame chart. 
30 minute time frame chart shows an A to B equals CD to the downside. Shows a nice TD nine count bottom, both of which were confirmed at 12 noon yesterday. Price is trading with inside the 30 minute profile. In the pre market out here, you've got ENVX trading out at about the 2020 level out here. 2093 is going to be the next resistance area. If price can close about 2093, price should run to 2252. Now, the request was just simply can I look at ENVX? So that's what's going on with it on a short term time frame basis. If this can rally nicely today and generate a bullish reversal candle, uh, then this will create a buy the D point pattern. You can see the A to B, and I just simply copy the A to B down. You basically made the one to one price held the bottom of its profile at 1963. So a bullish reversal candle would generate a Gartley buy pattern. This had a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that was confirmed. So you're really looking for a bullish reversal signal out there. Otherwise, you might just be getting a little bit of a counter trend move. We've got no topping pattern in the weekly basis. This, is, this suggests over time price wants to target 3441. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the monthly time frame so uh, uh wait for the uh, wait for a confirmation on the uh, daily and uh, if you get that then uh, you've got your gartley buy pattern and uh, time to fire away the caution out here is if you don't and price closes somehow below 1963 there's always a concern that this could gap down and create a gigantic island reversal that's not the pattern that you have right now so watch today's action intraday we uh we took a look at that on the 30 minute time frame chart again watch that 3252 level so lastly with just about uh 30 seconds left or so we'll finish off the day take a look at the nq remember folks you should expect and anticipate a rally that rally should last through today the question is do we rally again tuesday wednesday and thursday now it is the end of month fun buying that takes place uh, next week so uh, odds favor yes but watch the resistance levels resistance levels 12 473 on the four hour chart 12 413 on the five hour chart 12 467 on the two hour chart 12 467 on the 60 minute chart let's go with 12 467 price closes above that the rally continues through the rest of the day folks have a, a fantastic holiday weekend i'll see you on tuesday be safe out there and thanks so much for joining us You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.